Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, episode 16 of Borough Tailgate Talks. Let's go. Yes, sir. And Alex is wearing a hat. That's strange. I know, right? That's strange. Uh, guess this week, my good friends from high school. First, Jonah Lentz and Lana Bellata. Guys, thanks for coming on. How are you guys doing? Doing good, Mike. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing great. Starting school yes. pretty soon. Get back yeah. into it. Yes, Bless sir. You. Yes, sir. But uh, all right, real quick before we get going, Damar Hamlin is out of the hospital. Let's so good to hear. Oh, yes, yes, very, very good to hear. And um, we'll get to the Patriots and Bills game you know, a little bit later. But uh, it, it was just crazy that the first play since since the whole thing happened was uh what was it 96 yard touchdown return yeah down on the kickoff yeah, that was wild that was wild yeah and uh just absolutely insane and i'm glad i'm glad he's uh i'm glad he's all right but uh you guys got anything to add with him getting out of the hospital i mean you guys probably saw this but his foundation or charity has raised like eight million dollars since it happened yeah, it like a week Bill's Mafia is insane, but like for their players and stuff, I mean, they're all loyal to them. And yeah, the fact that they pulled that that much money in that amount of time for this guy is crazy. Just, it's a good story. It's a good yeah, story. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we got ourselves some NFL playoff predictions. And I can tell you right now, spoiler alert, I got the Bills winning the Super Bowl. I want, I want them to win the Super Bowl. Really? <laughs> wow. Team of Destiny. Oh, Team, wow. of Destiny. Yeah. Team of Destiny. Team of Destiny. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh yeah, so I'm I'm it's good for Hamlin. Good for Hamlin. But yeah. uh Yeah. So he's a pick guy too. Oh yeah, yeah. He's Cathedral yeah. Central That's Catholic. Right. Yeah, Central Catholic, graduated from Central Ca- Central Catholic. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So that's good. Uh hopefully he can get back on the field whenever he can, but uh but that's good. But uh okay, so real quick. We do talk about the NBA. We talk about the MLB, sadly. The NFL, a lot. But uh, NHL, too. NHL, too. Yep. But there's something I would uh, I'd like to discuss. And uh, I, got a little, I got a little song to prep this up a little bit. No Oh. <laughs> oh, I told, I told, I told these guys get ready to laugh because I'm gonna make you guys break. And uh, yeah, so Vince McMahon. If to, to short, long story short, basically, he wasn't. <laughs> he he was no longer CEO of World Wrestling Entertainment because he got into a little trouble with some payments to some women doing some extracurricular activities. And, and uh, as he does. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, so he re- retired and gave the company to his daughter, Stephanie. And oh, Triple yeah. H was running the ship, basically. Now, Vince McMahon is back. And he claimed that he was only back to... To, to get, get a sale of the company. But so happened two days later, Stephanie resigned, his daughter. So I'm sure it was just to get a sale of the company. I'm sure it was. And there's rumors that the company was sold to a Saudi Arabia company. So they are screwed. Now, these guys are not wrestling fans. I am. But I wanted to bring this up. But they know, they know the situation. They, 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 they understand it. I brought it up. But uh, that's that, that's pretty much all I'm gonna all I'm gonna uh, say about that situation. But, uh, hey, he was having fun. He was having fun. Yeah, this 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 was a this was a funny, not so funny because this is Vince did some bad things for real. Topic. So uh, all right, now that yeah, what was that, John? Still kind of funny. Still kind of funny. Vince but, still doing yeah, urban hype cycle. But still, but still very serious. So. Please do not cancel me later. But um, all right, Browns and Steelers. 
Steelers did not make the playoffs. But no, they got the win. Didn't. They got the win. But uh all right, Alex, what do you got? What do you got from that game? You know, Steelers come to the <laughs> game. Ran the ball effectively. Uh Najee, 20 carries, 84 yards and a touchdown, ran well. Uh Kenny Pickett, 13 for 29. The completion percentage wasn't really there, but 195 and a touchdown. Uh, Pickens, great game, three catches, 72 yards and a touchdown. Uh, you know, Steelers just played a good football game. The Browns had 300 yards, but only 14 points. They limited Deshaun Watson pretty well, held him to five for 12 on third down. Steelers themselves went nine for 15, which is very good. Um, sacked Deshaun seven times. And the Steelers O line only allowed one sack. That's impressive. Only four penalties for 20 yards. The penalties kind of killed the Browns. They had nine for 65. Uh, Najee fumbled on the one yard line, allegedly. No, he didn't. It didn't actually happen. He scored, but it's fine. Uh, Steelers played a great football game. They managed to keep Nick Chubb pretty well in check. He had 12 for 77. That's six per carry, but he didn't get in the end zone. Uh, they picked up the Sean twice. So, you know, the Steelers got hot towards the end of the season. What was that? Four or five straight wins to, to finish the season or something like that. Yeah, but it was a little, little, little too late. It was a little too late. Uh, Joe Flacco can't beat the 240th overall rookie, Skylar Thompson, apparently. Um, so <laughs> Joe Flacco is going to retire here very soon because he mustered a grand total of six points against the Dolphins' defense, which was... Pit, pit legend, Joe Flacco. So we'll see. Um, you know, Pittsburgh, you got a great position. You won nine games to keep Mike, Mike Tomlin's mediocre streak alive, you know, whatever. <laughs> Standard and, uh, just on the 17th overall pick, and now there's uh, three really good offensive tackles in the top 20. Uh, Broad Jones out of Georgia, Paris Johnson Jr. out of Ohio State, and Peter Skaronsky out of what Northwestern or whatever school he goes to, something purple. I don't know. Yeah. Um, three really good offensive tackles you could take in the first round. A lot of good corners and receivers to take in the second round, even though we technically have two first round picks this year. Uh, so, you know, considering the, the circumstances, pretty good season for the Steelers. Started meshing better, gelling better as a team. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how they do in the coming years. Uh, but did you guys see the? I'll, I'll get back to the to my thoughts on the game in a second. But did you guys see the? Apparently, the comments by Mitch Trubisky that he regrets signing with the Steelers. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, did see, I did see this. Yeah, I just saw uh, Deontay Johnson unfollowed the Steelers on Twitter today, too. He did. Okay. He unfollowed, he unfollowed <laughs> the that. Steelers and Axum. said, like, uh, I'm done with him. stuff's, about to, stuff's about to go down. Make sure you're tuned in or something like that. He tweeted. I'm, gonna, I'm actually, you know what? While we're talking about this game, I'm going to go on Twitter right now. So you guys can go ahead and continue with your thoughts. I'm going to find this tweet. Yeah. Uh, listen, we don't know how Mitch is behind the scenes as a locker room leader. So we can't really judge him on that unless – we hear stories that are confirmed. But, um, hey, I can understand him regretting signing that early. Because let's be real. Well, I, I, I think he regrets more signing that quickly. It was the first day of free agency, and he just That's decided. exactly what he said, yeah. Like, right. uh, I mean, I don't think he really regrets coming to the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Tomlin told him that they were going to draft a quarterback. That's so, true. So, he knew right away that he might not have the starting job, but mm-hmm. he kind of just crapped that away in the first four games of the season. And so my thing is Kenny Pickett. I questioned him early on because I was like, okay, he's a rookie, but he's playing horribly. That being said, Matt Canada is a horrible play caller. Yeah. I think we have enough offensive talent. We can go at teams instead of just, you know, throwing it underneath, but Mitch had his opportunity Kenny got hurt against the Ravens, I believe, and he came in and threw three interceptions. And I think you can obviously tell that Kenny brings a little bit of a spark, and I think guys just want to play for Kenny more. And it's nothing against Mitch. I think Mitch is a nice guy. I think he's going to be a good backup quarterback. He's going to have a good NFL career. But I think guys just want to play for Kenny more, and Kenny's him. Last few weeks, Kenny, like, he's the guy. He's the future. Like, I I doubted it early on, but then fan. Kenny has earned my respect the last four or five weeks. Absolutely. Yeah, that dude is a dog. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's he's the guy. Oh, yeah. That's probably going to be backwards. It says, ain't going to say too much, but stay tuned, is what Deontay Johnson tweeted at 10.04 this morning. 
Get him out. Uh -oh. Get him out. I don't care. Do we really need him? No. No. Do we no. really need him? Listen, all I'm going to say, there are some second-round receivers. Kayshawn Boot out of LSU, Rasheed Rice out of SMU, who people sleep on. That dude is nasty. Because do not draft a receiver in the first round. Please, for the love of God. I understand. I, I know. Please don't. Jordan Addison, it was in my my draft predictions last week. He's going 11th overall to the Titans. That's my prediction. He's a great receiver. He's got value. Please, for the love of God, don't spend a first-round pick on a receiver this year if you're Pittsburgh. And, well, I mean, like you said earlier, we basically have uh, two picks because of the Dolphins in the first round. But I, I think we need to understand what we need and not what um, everybody – things we need we don't we don't need like star players or star wide receivers or anything like that we 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 need an offensive line yeah see yes. i will say i will say they played much better as the year went on too yes but i think i think we need a stud middle linebacker i don't think we, i don't think we're uh, re-signing Devin bush i think we're letting him go yeah because he's a flop he sucks that, yeah. and we, we we have that the what is he like a second year rookie or something? That Robinson kid. Yeah, yeah. He's he's all right. He may be a little undersized for the position, yeah. but he did all right for two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. And as much as I like Devin Bush, I just don't think he has it anymore. He put on a bunch of weight, and he's yeah. just not the same as he was his rookie year. No, and he tore his ACL like what three games into his rookie year. Yeah, yeah. I just so, feel like I mean, he's never been able to fully bounce back from that. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So, yeah. This is a good I, I thought everybody's Adrian Peterson. Yeah. yeah. This is a good so. situation. We have a quarterback on a rookie contract, uh, a lot of cap space moving forward. So, you know, we're pretty much in a position where we can draft an offensive lineman in a in a good corner and then just pay a linebacker or something like that. We could we could pay a linebacker money um, mm -hmm. if we really want to. I don't think there's really anyone that's notable in the free agency market this year. But, I mean, heck, even if the Rams let go of Bobby Wagner and we pick up a veteran or something like that, you know. Some I would have loved to see us get Roquan Smith. I know. I was. I, was really I think they, they just paid him like five years, a hundred something mil or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he's mil. a stud. He's a stud. Uh, I would love to see us. So pick him up. Lamar's not going to be a Raven next year, basically, right? I mean, no, yeah, he's not now. Hundred million dollars. There's no way they're going to be able to pay Lamar now. I mean, not nothing like guaranteed either. No. So like, it's. That whole situation with Lamar is just awful. I feel so bad for that guy. Yeah. Is I he mean, playing? Do yeah, we know he might be healthy. No, no, I think he missed practice. He missed practice yeah. again. Doubtful. I, I've heard him and two are both optionable or uh, yeah. questionable. Well, I, don't, I don't think yeah. two is going to I don't think you're going to bounce back from that. And Lamar with his knee, uh, he's, he's been out since December 4th. And does he really want to play? Not at this exactly. point. Exactly. 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 If they're not, if they're not, if they haven't paid him yet, yeah. What's the point? Right, right, right. I agree. I agree. But um, um yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. So back to the uh, back to the Browns and Steelers. By the way, how do you not challenge that play at the end zone? Tomlin is well, a great coach, but he is a horrible. Like How? that's his fatal flaw. He cannot. His challenge percentage is atrocious. Yeah. He doesn't know when. He, he just. I don't know. And uh, well, I. Oh, you don't challenge that. <laughs> <laughs> like also, I think like if you if you're on the one yard line on first goal and they say you don't get it, I mean, it's probably not that big of a deal. But then, like two play one or two plays later, you fumble it, which he really didn't. But. I mean, at a, at through a coach's standpoint, I think that was probably a smart call. But, but my thing, my, my thing is like that was the opening drive. Yeah, as our first offensive possession, I feel like you just have to like, I mean, screw it. Like, like why not? At that yeah, point? Yeah. yeah. So, no harm, no foul. We won by what two touchdowns? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, I'm gonna tell you what, guys. I think Connor Hayward's gonna be something. He, he, really might, bro. he really might. Especially with Fryermuth went down at the very end of the game, holding his knee, and didn't come yeah. back in. So well, I, uh, I haven't heard anything about that. 
Well, um, that, he got good news. It's only a sprained MCL. Okay. I was going to say he was walking by himself. So yeah, right, that's so, good. Been that bad. Yeah. So th- that that's good news. But mm-hmm. as a number as a number two tight end on the Steelers, that that's that's really good for us. I mean, he he performed really well. Yeah. Yep. I I, I agree. I, I'm I'm like like plenty of times during Steeler games this year. My dad mentioned he, Connor Hayward's going to be something. And after watching him this whole season, I. I, I kind of agree. He's a baller, dude. He is. Yeah, he's a he's a yeah. baller. He's, he's, a, he's baller. A, he has big play mentality. Yep, definitely. And he can he can block. He can release pretty well. He can run the ball apparently. Yeah, we, we just yeah, apparently. that little thing across yeah. the line. I like that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that one, like that one play that they scored with Derek Watt. Mm-hmm. That one play that they scored with Derek Watt. Every third or fourth and one down situation, every single time they're running that play. Dude, oh, Derek Watt, I didn't realize this. He weighs 310 pounds. Are you serious? Yeah. Wait, he weighs what? He's six foot three, 310 pounds. I just saw that the other day. I'm like, are you for real? He weighs three bills. Man, what? No one might want to fact check me on that, but like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's like 310 pounds. It says 6'2, 234 on here. I don't know. Derek Watt? Yeah. You know who's a heavy fullback? Patrick Ricard. That dude is massive. Oh, yeah. That's what – because someone, to, someone told me that the other day. I'm like, what? Oh, yeah, Patrick Ricard's 6'3", three, three awesome. but he's a defensive lineman too. Yeah, wasn't he a nose guard in college? Yeah, he yeah. was. Yeah. Some big boys. Some big boys playing football. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so this, the schedule was released for the Steelers next for next season. And uh, all I'm going to say is that it's going to be pretty sick for myself since I've been a Kenny guy since 2017 to see him play at SoFi and uh, hopefully not get killed by Aaron Donald. So that's going to be exciting to see. That's going to be exciting to see. But, uh, but yeah, so you guys got anything else to add on to the Browns and Steelers? By the way, I thought it was funny the second the announcer in the first quarter said, now we're at quarterback for the Browns. Deshaun Watson, sec, second right after, boo! They booed him out of the stadium for, for, for good reason, but um, but uh, but yeah, so so good good win, you know, a little too late for the playoffs, but uh, hey, if the achieve, I will say this, if the achievement was to get better, they got I better. Think he, they got better. Oh, they def- they definitely got better, man. Closing question though. Six. Closing yeah. question. Do you keep Canada through the off season? No, I don't, no, I don't think so. Oh, no, no. The and, offense did get better, but we also were scoring <laughs> down the stretch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I still, I got better, but I still think it could be so much better because we have so much young talent. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Right. And my dad made made a good point. The reason they they haven't fired Canada yet is because they got to go through exit players, like all the players and whatever. You'll get to the coaches eventually. Yeah, it's and all player changes first. Hate and changes firing first. coaches. We do not fire coaches. They Definitely. hate it. Oh yeah. yeah. I could see him sticking around for another year just because that's what we do. But I would yeah. like to see him gone. God. More failed jet sweeps. Let's do it. <laughs> Gunnar Olszewski, who's somehow six foot, he looks five four or four on the football field. Yeah, he's tiny. Yeah. yeah, and didn't he get hurt too? Yeah, he got it. He got banged up. You want to know? You want you want to know what things the thing is too. When I saw he got, I only saw his number when he walked off. I actually thought that was Fryer Muth at first. Oh yeah. Coincidentally, later in the game, Fryer yeah. Muth got hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Just co- coincidence after coincidence after coincidence. But uh, but yeah. So that's that. All right, Patriots and the Bills. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Naheem Hines, two kick return touchdowns in one game. 96 and 101. Insanity. That's, yeah, that, that is insane. That is insane, man. And they did it They did it for DeMar. They did it for DeMar. And oh, they're going to continue. Yeah, continue to do it for DeMar as well. So, uh, so, yeah. So, Alex, what do you got in that game? All right. The Buffalo Bills won at home against New England 35-23. I will do what I normally do and start with the away stats. 
Uh, Mac Jones looked like uh, an 85-year-old Tom Brady, uh, 26 for 40 for 243, three touchdowns and three interceptions. Uh, nothing really to speak of on the ground game. Ramondre Stevenson was the only running back with above 50 yards. Uh, Devontae Parker had six catches for 79 yards and two touchdowns. Shout out to whoever randomly has him on your fantasy bench because you're probably mad that you didn't start him. Uh, and he was pretty much the only one with anything notable on the Patriots receiving core. And then Josh Allen, 19 for 31, 254, three touchdowns, and an absolutely horrendously brain-numbing interception in the red zone at the end of the first half. Uh, again, absolutely no rushing game whatsoever. James Cook led the team with nine carries for 45 yards. Stephon Diggs, monster game, seven for 104 and a touchdown. And John Brown had one for 42 yards in the touchdown, which was an absolute dime. Unbelievable. Just Josh Allen starting to heat up again, and it's the Bills' offense starting to look scary. 327 yards, um, seven for 12 on third down, incredible. Only two penalties for 20 yards. And they actually lost the time of possession battle. They only had 27 minutes time of possession. But when Josh Allen's chucking pigskins over mountains that's about all you need so good game for the bills uh they did what we needed them to do to get in the playoffs uh dolphins screwed it all up so whatever but bills are rolling as the two seed and from what i understand the nfl is just gonna roll with the way the seeding is and they're not gonna do like all the weird like neutral site crap and all that they're just gonna go off the way the seeding is which i mean is fair you know Chiefs and the Bills, or not the Chiefs, the Bengals and the Bills had one last game, but the Bills have a better record anyway, so I think it's better to just go off of what they have. Yeah, and hey, if the uh, the Bills are all right with it, then uh, all right, then move move on, I guess. But uh, but yeah, that's that's what I got on on that. Uh, And I will say, looking at my bracket, we'll get to we'll get to our predictions in a little bit. Looking at my bracket, and I'm. I'm quite sure all of us probably have the same for that, but uh, what would it be something? The Bills and Bengals play in the playoffs. It would be something indeed. I think they will. Yeah, they will. They will. Man, we're really getting, getting, giving spoilers out for our uh, for for our bracket talk. I, I think we should just get into it, unless you guys got anything to add for the Patriots and Bills games, Jonah. Yeah. I didn't watch that. No, nah, neither did I. Yeah, neither, neither did I. <laughs> oh, I. The only thing I was watching was the score. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they had it at the top left corner during the Steelers. Yeah. That, that, that <laughs> watch. Yeah, but so uh, that's that. All right. Um, Jonah and Landon, I think it's only fair, since you guys are the guests, that, and Alex, I don't know if you agree, since they're the guests, I think they should go first for their bracket predictions. What do you think? I'm fine with that. All right. So, uh, who wants to go first, Jonah? Later. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll go. All right. Um. So I, I'm going to take first. Well, I, I'm I'm going to take an obvious one here. I'm going to take uh, the Bengals over the Ravens. If even 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 if Lamar plays, he's still prone to injury, and he's going to be like not his usual self. And in the playoffs, you can't make. You can't make mistakes because those are, especially against the Bengals, because their offense is so freaking outstanding. It's like giving them a touchdown, basically. And so I th- I'm taking the Bengals over the Ravens. Um, I am I'm I really like the Chargers. I like Justin Herbert, but I think the if the Jaguars defense steps up, I think I have the Jaguars over the Chargers. And that that that's my only biggest upset. And then I obviously have the Bills over the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. And without two other, uh, I don't think their chemistry is the same. <laughs> and then uh, let's see who who would play. Would it be Jags Bengals? Jags okay. Chiefs or Chiefs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My fault. My fault. My fault. Thank you. Um. Yeah, I, I'm taking Chiefs, and then uh, Bills, Jacks, and right? Bills, Bills Jacks. and Bengals. Bills, ba- oh yeah. See, there's there's the there's the game right there. Um, dude, it's so it's so fifty fifty, but 
with uh, with the Bills having something in their pocket from that game, something to take uh, from with Demar. I, I think the Bills carry that momentum over. Um, and then I'm gonna, I'm going to take the Chiefs over the Bills. Yeah, like I, I don't I don't think I don't think what, what, Pat Pat Mahomes is he's in insane, and I don't think there's going to be anything that stops them in the postseason because they're starting to get hot. They they were da- they were dancing before a play and still scored on the Raiders. <laughs> they're, they're they're having fun at this point, so I I think their momentum is going to take them all the way. And see that. um. The NFC. Let's see. Um, say, say the who's who's I playing. I can give you the matchups. Uh, Tampa Bay at Dallas, or no Dallas? Take, at, sorry, Tampa Bay. I I don't care. Da- Dallas might have all the offensive weapons. The defense. You're playing Tom Brady at home in the playoffs. Doesn't matter what his record is. Honestly, it's Tom Brady in the playoffs. Yeah, After. and and. I don't know, Lynn, I don't know if you'll agree with this, but I think it was either last week or two weeks ago, I said the Cowboys are like the Yankees. They get all the weapons, they get all the weapons, they pay all this money, and they just cannot win the big one at the end. Absolutely. And it's it's the Cowboys. They choke in the playoffs every year. They do. Yeah. Um, And then it's Vikings. Giants. Oh, I'm taking the Giants. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Hundred percent. I I don't, I, I don't like the Vikings. Like, I knew they were going to be all right this year with Jay Jettas and whatever. But there's, they've been in too many close games, and in the playoffs, I I just, don't, I I mean, the Giants have nothing to, they have nothing to lose. They're just going to go all out, and I think Brian Dable has done a great job this season with them. So. Me too. I'm I'm taking Giants over uh, the Vikings, and then Seattle, gonna, San Francisco. Obviously, San Francisco. I I think San Francisco is going to take it, man. And I think, um, who would it be? Who would play the Eagles? Uh, the, the Giants, right? No, yeah. the Bucks. Oh yeah, the Bucks. I forgot you picked the Bucks. Yeah. Well, the Giants would go to Philly because they're the sixth seed. So then it would be Cowboys. <laughs> Or it will be Tampa at San Francisco. And I, uh, the 49ers, I think, are going to be in the championship. Um, I, I think I look at the Eagles this year like the, what was it the 2021 Steelers, 2020 Steelers, where they went 11 yeah. out. That, that's how I feel about them. I think they're going to be, uh, I feel like they had an easy schedule this year. That's fair. And, I mean, they, I mean, the whole at almost the whole NFC East is in there, so I, I don't like. Yeah. And um, I, I I don't like the Eagles, so I'm gonna I'm I'm going to take the Eagles just because, but they're gonna they're gonna get their asses handed to them in the championship game, and it's gonna be 49ers Chiefs again, and. I honestly, I, I don't know, man. That if if that happens again, I, I'm it's going to be a great game. But with the inexperience of Brock Purdy at quarterback, right? And even with Jimmy in there, it's still an outstanding offense. But I, I think with the experience of Patrick Mahomes, I think they're, I think Patty's going to take it this year. Yeah, probably, probably. It's actually. Actually, the Giants would play the 49ers, and the Bucks would play the Eagles. The lowest seed. Oh, goes. that makes sense. That, that's that's what it says in the bracket on CBS. The lowest seed goes to the one seed. Though. Yeah, I thought it was the lowest seed went to the one seed. It is. I promise you that. I, oh well. Who cares? Not, not, Niners in the championship. I'm 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 gonna take Patty. Sure. Good bracket, good bracket. All right, Jonah. So I'm going to start off with Seattle and San Francisco. I'm taking San Francisco. I feel like they're another team of destiny vibes. Brock Purdy, everyone's saying Tom Brady. Run with the hot hand. San Francisco all the way. They're going to 
plow through Seattle. Uh, I got the Chargers and Jags. I'm taking L.A. I watched that game with Tennessee and uh, Jacksonville. It was horrible to watch. I mean, neither team could really do too much. So happy for uh, Duville, but I think the run's over. Trevor Lawrence is going to be good, but they're done. Uh, Miami versus Buffalo. Buffalo all the way. Team of destiny. You know, there's no thought behind that. Um, New York versus Minnesota. I'm going with Minnesota on this one, but I don't think they're making it much further than that. I think the Giants just – Daniel Jones is their quarterback. That's all you have to say. Daniel Jones is their quarterback. Like, what's he really going to do? So, I like Brian Dable. Dable? Dable. Yeah, Brian Dable. You know, I, I like fat guys. He's a good fat guy. I like that. So, you know, but I think the run's done. Uh, Cincinnati, Baltimore, taking Cincy. Cincy's getting hot at the right time of the year. Joe Burrow's the man. He knows if Lamar's going to play. So, yeah, Cincy all the way. And then I'm taking uh, Tampa Bay over Dallas as well. Uh, I think Dallas are frauds. I hate Dallas. I hate Mike McCarthy. He's one of the fat people I don't like. Um, <laughs> So yeah, Mike McCarthy. Yeah, Mike McCarthy can shove it. I just hate him. I hate Dallas. I, I like Micah Parsons, Penn State fan. Mark Parsons, the man. But Dallas is a bunch of frauds. They couldn't beat Sam Howell and the Washington Commanders. So they'll be done. And it's Tom Brady. I think the Bucks are starting to pull it together a little bit. I think they're getting a little healthier. I think they're getting some of their offensive line back too. So and it's just Tom Brady. I don't. Being a Steelers fan, I've doubted Don Brady enough. I just stopped. I submit. Um, so who would play who after that? I got San Francisco, L.A., Buffalo, Minnesota, and Cincy, and Tampa Bay advancing next. So Dallas is – wait. Say Dallas is out. I took – I'm see? Yeah, Tampa Bay, um, Minnesota. Be Tampa Bay San- and uh, – uh, you, took, you took the Vikings, right? Yes. Yeah, so it'd be uh, Tampa Bay and Philly. It'd be, yes. it'd be put Philly and then Vikings at Niners. Okay. Would be the so I'm going to go with San Francisco and uh, Philadelphia in the NFC Championship game. I just think the Eagles are good enough. I don't think the NFC is that strong. I think the NFC is a much better division, conference as a whole. So I'm going to go with uh, the 49ers and uh, the Eagles in the NFC Championship game. Uh, the 49ers, I just think they're an absolute machine offensively. I like Brock Purdy, but I'm pretty sure I could go in Kyle Shanahan's offense and throw a couple touchdowns. You absolutely could. I promise you. And you I can't. Football, but it's the you know, Ohio State of the NFL. It's I mean, they, the yeah, they, they just are so stacked. George Kittle is playing out of his mind right now. Is Debo Samuel healthy? Yeah. <laughs> he for the playoffs. Okay. Okay, because the last game I watched the Niners were a couple weeks ago, and he hurt his knee or whatever. But, yeah, he's going to be, like, I, and again, Brock Purdy, great storyline team, team of destiny. I just think, um, you know, they'll make it to the NFC Championship game. For the AFC, I'm going to go with. So Cincinnati would play Buffalo in the divisional round, correct? Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go Buffalo over Cincinnati just because I, team of destiny, I said it a lot of times, but DeMar Hamlin, another great storyline. I also think Josh Allen's just the man. So, you know, keep it simple. I don't want to overthink this. And then again, Patrick Mahomes is the man. Who would they be playing? They'd be playing the Chargers. He owns that whole division. I just, again, keep it simple, stupid. Patrick Mahomes, good. Chargers, cursed franchise. I don't need to overthink this. Um, so the AFC Championship game would be what? The Bills and the uh, Chiefs I have. Gone Bills to the Super Bowl. Team of Destiny, DeMar Hamlin. And again, I just think the Chiefs' defense is not up to par. Chris Jones is a stud. But I just awesome. – that de- that defense just doesn't make me feel real good about them. And again, Patrick Mahomes is the best player in the NFL. If there's any debate about that, you're dumb. Yeah. So I'm going to send the Bills to the uh, Super Bowl against the 49ers. I think that's just going to be – the NFL would love to see that happen, you know. 
DeMar Hamlin, Bills, inspired football playing against the Mr. Irrelevant juggernaut offense. And the Niners have a great defense, too. They are stacked defensively. So I think I got Niners, Bills, Super Bowl. And from there, that's a coin toss. I don't know, man. I, 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 I can't. You got, you got a coin by you? What? You got a coin by you? <laughs> I, I mean, I do. I do. You want to call it in the air? Yeah, we'll go tails, bills, heads, niners. All right. We're going oh, tails. God, terrible foot. Hold on. That was a terrible foot. It is heads. So now I, I got niners winning the Super Bowl. All right. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. All right, uh, Alex, you want to go or do you want me to go? I'll uh... You can go. You can go. I'll actually pull up my bracket for this. Because we know, because we know, mine's going to be a cluster. And I almost said the whole, the whole thing. Cluster. Yeah, no. yeah. I almost said. Uh, so all right. So, Chargers and Jaguars. I'm going to go with Jaguars because future, future purpose, purposes. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll go Jags on that. Uh, Ravens and Bang- Bengals. No, no Lamar. Bengals, Dolphins, Bills, Bills are going to steamroll them. So that means I got Chiefs, Jags, Bengals, Bills, right? Yeah. Sounds about right. Okay. Uh, so from there, because I'll, I'll just do the whole AFC and then NFC. NFC. It's yeah. going to go back to Super Bowl. All right. So yeah, now the, the Chiefs, the Chiefs are going to steamroll the Jags. They just are. It's Pat Mahomes, like Jonah said, if you don't think Mahomes is the best player in the NFL, I mean. Might as well just stop watching football because because <coughs> he is he is he's just insane. Um, and then Bengals Bills um, Bills, Demar Hamlin man, they they're gonna do it for Demar. So then I got Chiefs and Bills in the AFC Championship, and yes, I'm going with the Bills to 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 make it to the Super Bowl. All right, NFC. Hopefully I don't screw this up. All right, so. The Giants and Vikings. I am also going to go with the Giants, which then I would put them with the Eagles and put them with the Eagles, right? Yeah. And I totally did not text Alex as Landon was talking about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Cowboys and the Bucks. I I can't stand. I cannot stand the Cowboys as well. So. I apologize for Costa. I've been sick the last four days. But uh yeah, I'm gonna go with Bucks and Brady in the playoffs. I just can't just can't. Even even yeah, okay. Yes, it was an up and down season for Tom Brady this season. But yeah, it is Tom Brady in the playoffs. I do not care if he is on the Browns. I do not care if he is on the Colts. It is Tom Brady in the playoffs. He's gonna be insane. So I'm gonna go Bucks, and then 49ers Seahawks. I'm gonna go 49ers. So then that means I got Eagles, Giants, Bucks, 49ers. Does that sound about right? Yeah. All right. Eagles are going to beat the Giants, and the 49ers are going to beat the Bucks. So then the NFC Championship, I got the Eagles and 49ers. I, 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 I do think the Eagles are going to make it to the Super Bowl. I'm gonna go Eagles. I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be the one that bites the bullet and goes goes the Eagles. So then I got Bills and Eagles in the Super Bowl. And, hey, I'm still on this DeMar train, man. They're going to do it for DeMar. So I got the Bills winning the Super Bowl. So that's Can you imagine a Bills-Eagles Super Bowl? <laughs> Those two fan bases would re- – like, I don't think we it's have people, any infrastructure. Of the season. There will be deaths. <laughs> people are going to die if that is the Super Bowl. The amount Bowl. of car batteries and dildos that will be thrown on that field – Will be astronomical. Oh my god, hopefully, I don't um, know. <laughs> all right, so I will do mine now. I will share my screen because this is cool. You, um, got, you, got, you, got, you got the you got the thing for it. Do I need to give it to you? Or we no, I got it. I got it. Oh, we're well, cool. All right. Um, so I actually came up with score predictions based on some obviously very educated statistics. Just kidding. I came up with a score that sounded cool. Um, <laughs> we will start. With Jacksonville hosting LA, I do believe this is Herbo revenge game. 
Chargers are getting healthy at the right time. They got demolished by the Jaguars earlier in the season. Um, I still don't think Brandon Staley's the guy in L.A., but I'm going to say that the Chargers get away with this one 31-24 on the road in Jacksonville. And then up next, I will go Cincinnati-Baltimore. Again, just like everyone else said, Landon said especially with or without Lamar, the Ravens just don't have it this year. So I'm going to pick Cincinnati at home 35-20 to over the Ravens. And then finally, uh, Skylar Thompson at Josh Allen. Bills win 38-17. That one should be pretty self-explanatory. And then to the divisional rounds, the Chargers will go to Kansas City, who, again, as Landon said, the Chiefs own the Chargers, so they will win 24-20. And then Cincinnati and Buffalo in the DeMar Hamlin Bowl will be Buffalo over Cincinnati 34-31. Some close games in the divisional, which obviously means that Buffalo will take on Kansas City in the AFC Championship, which will be a thriller per usual 35-28, 35-28, and now I will get <laughs> over to the NFC and get started over here. So first matchup, I, I'm i doing it. I'm doing it. I don't <laughs> think the Bucs have it. I don't think the Bucs have it. I don't. I they have Tom sucked. Oh, yeah. past and been dead wrong, but I, I don't think they have it. Dallas will go into Tampa and get some sweet revenge for the 19 to three embarrassment at Jerry world week one on primetime, uh, 24 to 14. And then just like everyone else, Minnesota's frauds, Danny dimes playoff season, baby giants will beat the Vikings 28, 21 on the road in the wild card. And then San Francisco will take care of business against Seattle. I do think we'll get some Geno magic. That'll make it a two score game like this, but San Francisco will get away with this one, 31 to 21 at home. And then divisional round, the incumbent one seed Philadelphia Eagles will play the Giants, who will win the, they'll beat the Giants 31-17 in the divisional. And then San Fran will take down Dallas in the divisional as well. I do think this will be a close game. I think the Cowboys defense is talented enough. um, And I think, Dak Prescott could most definitely score less than 20 points in this game, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say they play a good game against the Niners who have, you know, obviously played really well all season, but we'll see. So Dallas falls to San Francisco on the road, 28 to 20, which then gives us our NFC championship, which is Philly beating San Francisco in a barn burner, 21 to 17. I just think that Brock Purdy's rookie nature will finally show in this game and that it will just they won't have just quite enough to get past the Eagles in the championship, which then puts Buffalo versus Philly in one of the most defenseless Super Bowls in the past couple of years where Buffalo will win 38 31. I believe it is the year for the Bills. And that is my final completed bracket, I think. I, I don't know, boys. I got a pretty good feeling about this one. I don't do these very often, but. I like these odds here. I, I don't know about the scores, but I think the I think the teams might be might be pretty pretty accurate. So we'll see. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like it. I like that a lot. But uh, yeah, this is uh, exciting playoffs. I should say. Very, very, very exciting playoffs. And uh, I, I'm I'm excited, man. This is gonna this is gonna be fun. I think there's gonna be just a lot of upsets or like surprises here and there i think i I, i'm excited for it it's gonna be a fun year titans and steelers both missed the playoffs so it's time for me to become the honorary 49ers fan that i've always been totally always been there you go i'm hopping on the bills train i'm staying in the afc i do have a hot take though after the way the cowboys played in (laughs) week 18 if they get embarrassed again in the wild card round i believe that sean payton will be the head coach of the dallas cowboys next season that is a very hot take, but Mike McCarthy again is a fat idiot. So there's a real world possibility that, that does happen. Oh what is that? that Skip Bayless call him drop the Mike McCarthy or something like that. <laughs> I don't it's, know. It's, it's true. true. It's true. Mike McPenalty. Are we allowed to say his name on this? <laughs> we name drop. We name drop <laughs> NFL head coach. Why not? Yeah, yeah. I thrashed the Raiders when they lost to Jeff Saturday in his first NFL coaching game. I thrashed them on hey, this show for that. The only ones that lost or that uh, have lost to them. They're the only team. Mm-hmm. Still, the Raiders are a dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. They really are. They really are. Like, dude, and I don't think Derek Carr is the problem either. Derek Carr's going to be a to make the playoffs. I swear to God. 
he's going to be a Jet, and they're going to make the playoffs this next year. I can see I that. Ah, uh, yeah. Dak Wilson, I don't know what his future. He sound he he will be a really good CFL or XFL quarterback. Oh, for sure. He's going to be a phenomenal CFL or XFL quarterback. And he had the entire league and everybody on social media fooled from that one throw from Pro Day. Literally. Oh my god. That's the that's the only reason he went number what was it? Number 2? Two? Two. two. Yeah. From the BYU, a very yeah, historical, a BYU proud quarterback and an FCS quarterback went before Justin Fields did. Yeah. Hey, Dwayne's got him on, on speed dial to be a to be an XFL quarterback. Right, Dwayne's right, right. Speed um, Yeah, I agree. And Alex did say that he thinks Will Levis will probably be like that too. I think oh, Will okay. Levis is a better quarterback than Zach Wilson because he played yeah. in the SEC. But I do think Will Levis will have the same exact impact on the NFL. Yep, I do too. Everyone's gonna see him I chuck never watched ball him like seventy yards at his pro day, and they're gonna be like, oh, so good. Jonah, he he has he has a really good arm. He's a massive that's arm. That's about it. I mean, he like the way he played at Kentucky is just. I mean, he he's he's good for college. The, it, the arm strength might translate to the NFL, but his decision making and stuff like that, it's. He's got some He's good gonna, mechanics, but he definitely plays like shot. reckless hero ball. Reckless Once he transferred ball. from Penn State, he became dead to me because he made me watch Sean Clifford for another two years. Yep. So, Will Levis is dead to me. I thought he was at Penn State first. That's so crazy. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. We um, had to watch Sean Clifford for six years. Yep. <laughs> I feel sorry for you. <laughs> uh, but all right, that's our predictions. Now NBA talk, which that means Alex is done for the. No, I'm kidding. Yep, I'll sit here and drink my water while you guys talk. <laughs> well, we'll give our we'll give our we'll give our thoughts on that national championship game after we're done with the NBA. But um, all right, I'm Jonah. Go ahead and. <laughs> yeah, nice. All right, Jonah. What do you got on your team? The Boston Celtics. What do you want to talk so, about? So, I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm a very casual NBA fan. I don't like watching the NBA that much. So I've watched, I'll watch a couple of Celtics game every now and then. After the All-Star game is when I really start tuning in because that's when it really starts mattering, the back half of the season. But Jason Tatum is leading the team uh, with 30.8 points per game. Uh, he is my MVP vote for the year. Luca could give him a run for his money, but I don't think the Mavs are going to do really anything. I think the Celtics, this is their title to lose this year. I don't see anyone really coming out of the West that's really going to challenge them and uh, like a whole team together. The Warriors, but like Steph's hurt. They aren't doing too hot. I mean, I just, that finals last year will haunt my dreams for the rest of my life because they, I did, Steph Curry's the man. I mean, that, that's all, this, the Warriors, are always going to scare me. No one else in the West really scares me that much. As far as the East concern, the Nats are starting to come together a little bit, which is scary. Just as far as firepower, Kyrie, KD, um, the Bucks. Always, Giannis scares me just because he's a freak. Um, I mean, yeah, we got Robert Williams back, which is huge for us defensively. I love Al Horford, but Al. I mean, Robert's going to be the future for our big men defending the rim. I think he's a stud, you know, rim protector, shot blocker, rebounder. He's a freak athlete. Um, Marcus Smart, my favorite player. He's the, he's, <laughs> he's the man. He's going to run around. He's going to flop. He's going to turn the ball over. He's going to make my heart rate go up to 184 beats per minute. What? <laughs> Sounds like somebody you know, right? No, yeah, he, yeah. If I was, yeah, that was me in high school when I played basketball. He's gonna be unpredictable. He's gonna be nuts. He's my favorite. I mean, I don't think he's a true point guard because, again, he turns the ball over too much, and he does just dumb stuff all the time. His shot decision is so like his shot taking decision making is horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, but Mark Smart's the man. Jalen Brown, I mean. I hope we keep this duo of Tatum and Brown locked up for the future because I really do think the NBA is theirs if they win the championship. I think we will be the team for the next several years if we can stay healthy. And just, I mean, 
we're a good all around team. I mean, I'm just looking at our bench. We have really, really good depth. We got good players that can come off the bench and give us minutes. Good veteran players. Blake Griffin. I mean, no, he's not playing much for us, but I like Blake Griffin. Yeah, he's cool. He dumped over Kia. That's pretty cool. Um, I mean, that's all I have for players, really. I mean, Jason Tatum's a runaway MVP. I mean, his bag is so deep. He can make shots all over the place. He's getting kind of the Kobe, Michael, even LeBron now at his older age, the baseline jumper, like just back you down, get to his spot. Like, it's beautiful to watch. But, like, my question going forward with the Celtics, what are we going to do with our coaching? Because Joe Mazzula, Mazzula, yeah, that's his name, right? Yeah, Mazzula. He's doing a fantastic job, I think, but I don't know what the deal is going to be with uh, Ime Odoku. I I just that whole situation fascinates me, but I think that's a problem for a later date. So yeah, that's all I got. Celtics, it's their finals to lose this year. Yeah. I think Tatum's a man. I think Jason Tatum is, is the man. I, I mean, he is so big. He's gotten so much stronger. Mm-hmm. He just got he's got to play well in the final. Last finals was hard to watch. I mean, he did not play well at all during the finals. I would say Robert Williams was our best player for the Celtics during that finals. And he was injured for the majority of it. Yeah, so that's that for the uh, Celtics. Landon, what do you got for your team, which the Chicago Bulls, oof. <laughs> you know, Mikey, uh, ju- just like Jonah, I am I am a average NBA fan. I mean, mm-hmm. I I absolutely loathe watching the NBA. Like, mm-hmm. the the – at this point, it's just like a – it's an entertainment business. Right. And I like culture for the NBA is just taken over. But for my Bulls, man, we, we, we got DeMar DeRozan and we have Zach Levine. Mm. And that, that's about it. We still don't have Lon- – we still don't have Lonzo back uh, because of his injury. But, I mean, we're doing all right. I mean, Zach Levine and, uh, well, both DeMar and Zach have been going off the past few games. But after last year in the playoffs against the Bucks, oh, my gosh. It, it was pretty much downhill from there. And if we don't, like, if we don't get Lonzo back soon enough, I, I think we're just going to, like, just start rebuilding. Just get rid of everybody. Get picks whatever just start over and again and like honestly i really don't have any belief or confidence in them like they 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 might make the playoffs as like the great seed but i honestly i have i have zero confidence i think they're just like zach levine has been rumored to be traded it's some uh during free agency and stuff but honestly i i other than I don't have any confidence in them and the good parts of DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine, that's about it. Mm-hmm. And like the, the East this year is so, so OP with the, you know, the Bucks, Celtics, Sixers, the, uh, the Nets, and even like the upcoming teams are just, I mean, it's, I, I, I have pretty much little to zero confidence in them. Mm-hmm. That that that's really all I have. I I don't I don't even care what the stats are. They're not they're not going. <laughs> they're irrelevant. They're irrelevant. Um, and yeah, and it's quite fine because I don't think the Blackhawks because they they play. I think they play in the United Center as well. I don't think they're doing that that too, that well either. And no. uh, it's quite funny. The most relevant thing out of out of that building for the last three years was CM Punk returning to wrestling. <laughs> it wasn't even the Blackhawks. Or the Bulls, it was Sam Punk. But um, <clears throat> all right. Well, I'm gonna be honest, just like Jonah and <laughs> no. Okay, I'm. I, I try to pay. I try to pay attention to the Hawks. And my brother Benny, he's he is more of a Hawks fan than me. Yes, I have a Trey Young jersey on. But come on, it, it's a cool jersey. It's a cool jersey. I mean, it's a cool jersey. It's a cool jersey. But uh, so I'm going to be honest. Most of the information that I'm going to talk about has has come from my brother. 
So, and I did a little research to, to back it up a little bit. So, all right. So this is not this has not been a good year for the Hawks. It, it, it is not a lot of drama. I have mentioned the Hawks once before on the show with the drama with Trey Young and Nate McMillan. And uh, I'm gonna be real. The owner is not a very good owner. And in oh, and I and trust me, trust me, I know a thing or two about bad owners. Oh, no. uh, so, so in reality, there's there's no there's no direction right now. There's no scouting right now, and right now the the roster isn't full. You want to know why the roster isn't full? It's because the owner does not want to get into the luxury tax. Because, of course, it's a money issue. Of course, it's a money issue. And everybody knows Trey Young is the star of, of, of the team. And I will say, picking up DeAndre Murray was a good pickup for the Hawks, you know? And quite frankly, going into the season, guys, I mean, the Hawks are 19 and 21. Going into the season, I like their starting five. Young, Murray, Hunter. Um, God, who's the power forward? Who's the power forward? Oh, John Collins. Duh. John Collins and then Clint Capella. That's not a bad – if you look at it in the preseason, that's not a bad starting five, I would say, in my opinion. It's not a bad starting five. Granted, John Collins is kind of tracked. This is ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, not a bad starting five. But, yeah, it is not the Hawks' year. And – Nate McMillan's got to go. The owner, the owner has got to get his head out of his, you know what? And that's what I, that's the, the, the that's pretty much all I got to say about the Hawks, man, is, it's just not been a good year compared to the last two years. And, um, and honestly, I don't know. It feels like, it feels like compared to the last two years, Trey Young seems off. Would you say that's fair? Fair to say? Joe, he, needs to get, he needs to get a new haircut. Well, yeah, yeah. I sat. I went to a Hawks game last year, and um, <clears throat> I guess now two years ago. And uh, I sat behind the Hawks bench, and I can see the ball spot. Dude, it's bad. He, he needs to. He needs to stop getting the cut <laughs> that looks like a lollipop just got popped on the carpet. Okay. Yeah. He he needs like some. Like yeah. some you can't be time. you can't be the face of a franchise like that and have that going on in your head. Exactly. exactly. Bosley, yeah. Rogan, he has he has to figure something out. Yeah. yeah I think that's it. the Hawks missing key. I think he needs to get a better haircut and they'll be like, like, have you ever heard what Jason Tate said about his haircut? What do you, what do you say? he say? He says whenever he gets a new cut, he's gonna drop like forty or something, or he's gonna play great. Yeah. And trade Trey Young just needs a whole new set of hair. <laughs> and, like, maybe he'll start playing like his old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's all I got for the uh, Hawks. So, uh, all right. We got, unfortunately, we got two minutes to talk about this national championship game. Oh, no, two like, minutes. I, we, we, we shouldn't even waste it. We shouldn't even waste the two minutes on it. Yeah, we, we, we should, but we got, we, we do, we do got to cover something in two minutes. So, might as well just give our thoughts on it. That was the worst national championship game. Yeah, in a lot. <laughs> that felt illegal to watch. What like, Georgia did to TCU? Like I, I was, I was at a basketball game and I was watching it on my phone, mm. and it was like watching, like it, it looked like it was Georgia playing against TCU. That that's exactly what it was look. That's exactly what it looked like. I, Georgia, I, Georgia was manhandling them from the like from the start I think like the that. season yeah, it's like the beginning of the season when Clemson plays like Wofford or yeah, one exactly. of those teams. That's literally it literally looked like Clemson versus an FCS football team. Yeah. It did. I mean it was bad. I mean I really think if Georgia kept their starters in the whole game and they went full tilt for the full 60 minutes because they basically coasted the last quarter and a half. Yeah. Was it 38 7 at halftime? Yeah. The end, like the way beginning of the fourth quarter. Yeah. I think they could have gotten close. Maybe not 100. They definitely could have broken 80, 90. They could have put an 80 bomb on TCU in that game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But, I mean, it felt illegal to watch. They just, it was, 
And I, I really think, I mean, TCU obviously was just, they just weren't up to par, but. They were outdated. That's all it was. Georgia's, Georgia's a great team. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're the new Alabama. They're the new, the new Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all I got to say about that game. I'm a 25 really year old quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> he's not, he's not going to do anything in the NFL. Yeah. He, he's the same age as Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm, right. And Lamar Jackson already has an MVP. Yeah. But uh, you guys got anything else to add to that game? Because I, I, I really do not. I got, I got one quick thing to throw in, though. Mike, you're going to be impressed. Three seconds. It's a baseball thing. Carlos Correa, six-year, $200 million, fully guaranteed deal to the Minnesota Twins. Absolutely insane. Unbelievable. I don't even watch baseball, and I still know that's crazy. He's one of the Twins for now because the physical. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Jonah, thank you for coming on to the show. Yeah. Landon, thank you for coming on to the show. Absolutely. And, uh, yes, we will see you guys next week. Yep. Thanks for having us, guys. All right. See you. Yep. All right.